All right. How are you guys doing? It's Isaac Wade, doctor of pharmacy. Let's talk today about floxetine brand name Prozac. So this is a type of antidepressant. It's actually one of the most commonly prescribed antidepressants out there. And for good reason, you know, it's a really great drug. And if you've been prescribed floxetine, you know, you should, it would be beneficial to learn a little bit about this drug. So let's talk today about floxetine. Um, as always, first, I'll be telling you guys the mechanism of action of this agent. Then I'll be telling you its indication. So what kind of conditions is it commonly used to treat? Then I'll be telling you guys about its safety profile. So side effects and drug-drug interactions. And lastly, I'll be providing you guys some of my own thoughts and feelings about floxetine. So if you find this type of information helpful, feel free to like and subscribe and let's get into the video. Floxetine is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. What that means in regular person speak is that it increases the amount of serotonin in your brain. And what we found with people and animals and all types of things is that if you increase serotonin over time, the person feels better. And it also helps to prevent brain damage that's caused by being depressed. Depression actually does uh, cause brain damage. It's neurotoxic and not treating depression actually makes it more likely that you'll have depression, makes it more likely that you'll have longer depression, and it can potentially impair other elements of cognition as well. So it's really good to treat depression. Okay, so floxetine, what's it for? Usually it's going to be for depression. Uh, it can also be used for obsessive compulsive disorder and bulimia as well. There are some off-label indications that doctors might also use it for. Um, anxiety is pretty common. Other types of eating disorders and PTSD are pretty common as well. So quick note here, floxetine, it's usually going to be for adults. If you're a child, so less than 18, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, if you have other medical conditions, or if you're taking other medications, make sure you talk to your healthcare provider about that because there might be some issues. So floxetine is available as a 10 milligram capsule and a 20 milligram capsule. Uh, in Canada, for whatever reason, the 10 milligram capsule is really expensive because usually in the clinical guidelines, 20 milligrams is the lowest therapeutic dose. And for that reason, I guess drug companies can charge way more money for the 10 milligram capsule. But just FYI, in terms of administration, you're going to want to take floxetine once per day at the same time every day with or without food is fine. Doesn't really matter. But if you find floxetine gives you nausea or if it upsets your stomach, which is a fairly common side effect for serotonergic antidepressants. Take floxetine with food. That's going to help. Okay, floxetine is more of a stimulatory antidepressant, to be honest. Some people find after they take it, they feel more active, more awake. And for that reason, I'd probably recommend taking floxetine in the morning. Like other types of antidepressants, you're going to want to uh, titrate floxetine up slowly. So, you know, start at 20 milligrams and go to 40, then go to 60 over a couple of weeks. What that is going to do is it's going to lower your chances of experiencing side effects. Most people will take between 20 to 60 milligrams of floxetine per day. That tends to be the therapeutic dose. The onset of floxetine is about one to two weeks to notice any benefits and four to six weeks until you reach that maximum benefit. In terms of side effects, and like any other drug, floxetine does have the potential to cause side effects. But, you know, floxetine, so it's going to cause your regular SSRI type side effects. You know, nausea, trouble sleeping, dry mouth, um, drowsiness, anxiety sexual dysfunction, and uh, weight gain or weight loss, okay? Most of these side effects are going to go away or get better over time. Uh, sexual dysfunction. This type of side effect is probably not going to get better over time, and about 50% of individuals experience sexual dysfunction with SSRI type antidepressants. So if sexual dysfunction is something that you're concerned about, I'd probably recommend uh, going with something like bupropion or mirtazapine or vilazidone or vertioxetine, not going with floxetine. In terms of more serious side effects, floxetine does cause something called a QT prolongation, which is a type of cardiovascular side effect. Um, floxetine might also cause uh, gastrointestinal bleeds. It can sometimes induce mania in individuals with bipolar disorder. And then also in younger people, so people between the age of like 18 to 25, floxetine might increase the risk of suicidal ideation. Okay, that being said, if you're depressed, your chances of suicide are about 25 times higher than someone who isn't depressed. And the small increase in suicidal ideation that may be connected to SSRIs, that risk does not exceed the risk of untreated depression. Because if you don't treat depression, your chances of committing suicide are 25 times higher, which is way bigger than your chances if you take a SSRI type antidepressant. That being said, I always recommend my patients who are younger uh, between 18 and 25 again to you know just let someone that you know know that you're starting 
a SSRI or whatever type of antidepressant just so that they can monitor you during the first couple weeks. Typically, this type of side effect tends to get better after the first week of therapy. So if you're feeling bad during the first couple of weeks, if you can just get through it, usually you'll start feeling about, uh, better uh, later in the course of therapy. Quick correction, if you are feeling suicidal, seek medical attention immediately. On the other hand, if you are feeling bad during the first couple of weeks of therapy, just stick with it. It's probably going to get better. Floxetine has a very long half-life. What this means is that it lasts in your body for a very long time, and this makes it special in a couple of ways. So first of all, the discontinuation syndrome. So the discontinuation syndrome happens mostly with serotonergic antidepressants, and when you stop taking it, if you don't uh, taper down slowly, or if you miss a dose with some medications, you can feel really bad, right? It's kind of like a mini drug withdrawal. Uh, you might have some insomnia, some agitation, some brain zaps, etc., the thing about floxetine is that floxetine leaves your body really slowly. It's got a really long half-life. So what that does is it allows your body to kind of adapt to not being um, exposed to the antidepressant, to having lower levels of serotonin very slowly over time. So people generally don't get a discontinuation syndrome with floxetine. That being said, still recommended, you know, taper off floxetine slowly. If you're at, you know, some really crazy high dose like 80 milligrams, it might not be the best to just stop taking it. It might be good to, you know, just taper down slowly, but you don't really need to be as worried about the discontinuation syndrome compared to other types of medications. So floxetine has a whole bunch of drug-drug interactions, unfortunately, because it inhibits this liver enzyme that also metabolizes a whole bunch of other drugs. So when floxetine inhibits that enzyme, those other drugs don't get metabolized and they kind of build up. This enzyme is called CYP2D6 if you're interested, but because of this interaction, floxetine has a lot of drug-drug interactions, more so than some of the other types of antidepressants. So if you're taking other medications, let your doctor know. Some of the more common drug-drug interactions, so alcohol might increase your risk of impairment, so just be careful. Uh, cannabis might increase your co the concentration of floxetine in your blood. Uh, cannabidiol, so CBD, tends to also inhibit CYP2D6. CYP2D6 breaks down floxetine. So if you inhibit that enzyme that breaks down floxetine, floxetine can build up. That being said, is this interaction clinically significant? Have there been reports of people with floxetine toxicity induced by cannabis usage? I haven't read it. If you have, let me know in the comment section below. But from my understanding, this is a more theoretical interaction. I've also seen floxetine studied in the context of treating alcohol use disorder and cannabis use disorder as well. So what they did is they take individuals who are using a lot of alcohol, individuals who are using a lot of cannabis, and they'd give them floxetine. So if they studied floxetine in that context in these types of individuals, if doctors have studied floxetine in that context, my opinion would be that it's probably okay if you're going to be using a little bit of cannabis every once in a while, if you're going to be having one or two drinks every once in a while, probably not going to be an issue. That being said, let your healthcare provider know about any type of recreational drug you're using and be cautious. Other types of drugs that fluoxine interacts with. So it interacts with other serotonergic drugs that might cause a serotonin syndrome. Serotonin syndrome, that's like a disorder where you are exposed to too much serotonin, and it's actually fatal in certain circumstances. So it is something that you should keep an eye on. Um, drugs that might contribute to a serotonin syndrome with fluoxetine include hallucinogens, okay, so magic mushrooms, LSD, MDMA, those types of drugs, I'd probably just try to stay away from them. Um, amphetamines, including, you know, methamphetamine, cocaine, those drugs I'd be careful with as well. High doses of cough syrup, so dextromethorphan, certain types of opioids I'd be careful with as well. And then uh, headache medicine, so your triptans, I'd be careful with as well. So pretty much all any drug that touches serotonin, I'd just be careful with. And then lastly, any type of uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitors you should also avoid, so like meclobamide, and interestingly, ayahuasca you're going to want to avoid because ayahuasca also has a monoamine oxidase inhibitor in it, and if you take those, that'll also increase your chance of having a serotonin syndrome. Okay, so in terms of efficacy, obviously, um, it's difficult to compare different drugs in terms of efficacy because all the studies are done under different circumstances. But there was a really big network meta-analysis where the investigators did a really good job of trying to do this. And what they found, so they found that floxetine in terms of efficacy, it's, it's kind of closer to the bottom. There are a lot of agents that are probably going to be more efficacious than floxetine. You know, something like your amitriptylines of the world, something like your escitalopram's in the world, probably going to be a bit better. Is this clinically significant? Is this difference going to make a huge 
Um, you know, is it going to impact your response to phloxetine? I don't know. Probably not, to be honest. I would probably choose your antidepressant based on tolerability and what kind of side effects you're willing to put up with. But that being said, this is kind of, if you were to compare the different drugs in terms of efficacy, this chart would be how you would do it. Phloxetine does make up for this lack of efficacy, I guess you could say, in terms of its tolerability profile. So if you look at this chart over here, you can see phloxetine is one of the more well-tolerated medications. Individuals were less likely to discontinue phloxetine, and there is essentially no difference between uh, phloxetine and placebo. So phloxetine, well-tolerated, maybe a little bit lacking in efficacy, but I probably wouldn't use that to decide whether or not to use phloxetine. Okay, so we talked about safety, we talked about mechanism of action, we talked about efficacy. Let's talk about my opinion about this drug, because every, everyone wants to know my opinion, everyone's always asking <laughs> for my opinions about everything. So let, let's talk about that. Um, so phloxine, in my opinion, you know, great drug, great antidepressant, lots of clinical experience with this drug. I believe it was um, approved by the F uh, FDA something in like the late 1980s. So we've got a lot of, a lot of uh, data about this molecule. Um, good drug, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, bulimia, good for those conditions. Other off-label conditions, I would probably recommend going with one of the first-line therapies for other types of conditions, but, you know, talk to your healthcare provider about it because each person's situation is different. Phloxetine, again, long half-life. If you're someone who's worried about the discontinuation syndrome, if you sometimes forget to take doses of your medications, or if you're someone who... Um, just, you know, just doesn't want to have to taper off when they discontinue their antidepressant. Phloxetine is probably going to be a good option in that case because it does not cause a discontinuation syndrome. However, if you're going to be switching to a different antidepressant, you need to consider how long phloxetine is going to uh, last in your system. So you might need to wait a little bit longer after discontinuing phloxetine before starting something else. And then lastly, because it inhibits that liver enzyme, if you're someone who has a lot of other medical conditions or if you're taking other drugs, I'd probably recommend a different antidepressant just because phloxetine has a whole bunch of uh, drug-drug interactions that is going to make things really complicated, that's going to, um, you know, might put you at risk of having certain side effects and make the clinician's job more difficult. Anyone who's managing your medications or your physician or your pharmacist or whoever, they're going to have to do more thinking whenever they're <laughs> deciding whether, what or not to prescribe you. So that's all I have to say about phloxetine. If you found this video informative, if you found it interesting, feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.